We had a gentleman who was bit by a venomous snake over the weekend. So that alerted us to the situation. After speaking with him, we found out that he had a lot more snakes in his home. And in the state of New York, you are not allowed to possess any venomous snakes unless you have a license to be an exhibitor or for educational purposes. A situation like this is very dangerous. When you're in a residential neighborhood and you've got over 100 venomous snakes in your basement, we take that very seriously. When we got the call last night, we were told that there was approximately 50 snakes. Now, when we got here on site today, we heard that there may be at least twice that many. We've got a couple of uh, heavy-duty locking trash cans and a couple of uh, five-gallon buckets with locking lids to move snakes around if we need to. We're not allowed to bring cameras in. It's nice to be able to rely on resources like the Bronx Zoo. Their specialists are going to be handling the snakes, preparing the snakes for transport, and taking them to a safe location. First look at the snakes, they seem to be in pretty decent condition. You can't help but be kind of overwhelmed when you go into a house and you see virtually every space is filled with snakes from wall to wall. This isn't something that we do regularly. Snake bites for a, a hiker on the mountain, that's typical for us. Uh, rare, you know, exotic venomous snakes is not a typical response for us. We've managed to safely pack up all the snakes, so we gotta take them back to the zoo. Ready? Let's start loading. These are exotic species. They're very interesting species, some of them. There are some species that are less common, Mang pit vipers, Hagen's pit vipers, Taiwanese mountain vipers. This is crazy. Private people really shouldn't be housing venomous snakes. Aside from the issues of legality, is it just a logistical issue with providing the care that these animals need? I think that looks good. Yeah, looks great. We've been here about seven hours. It's been a long day. Good Thanks for everything. Yeah, thank you. We're going to take them all back to the Bronx Zoo, and we're going to set them up in one of the quarantine rooms at the health center. And then we have to wait till the court gives us custody, and then we can help place them. So the goal today is going to be to try and get everybody into the new containers. We don't know his collection's history, but anything new, even if we were getting it from another zoo, we would put it into quarantine to keep it away from our animals. It's just a standard safeguard to make sure we don't bring in any viral disease or other sort of thing. OK, so let's, let's get started. You ready? Yep. OK, I'm opening. All right, lifting. Really beautiful insulators. We have two uh, East African gaboons, little female. That's a pretty snake. I like that. Yeah. Some are more common than others. Look at these things. The rare Asian pit vipers come from parts of the world where it's not easy to access. That is a big rhino viper. This is super cool. I mean, it's exciting to see like so many different species in the same room. I mean, it's crazy this isn't somebody's house, but these, these snakes are pretty awesome. That one is amazing. That is amazing. Super variable. Whenever we remove the tapes, we have to be uh, super careful because the lids do come off uh, fairly easy. I mean, people usually use these to pack their lunch, uh, where now they're packed with snakes. This is a, a big task to care for this large of a collection. I mean, they're venomous snakes. That's inherently a challenge. You have to be careful what you're doing with these animals. Kelvin, we'll do this one next. And, um, only the reptile department is currently trained for caring for the venomous collection. And whenever we're working in this room, we have to have two people. But of course, we do maintain anti-venom on site, just in case there is some unforeseen accident that leads to a bite. There's a, so many babies. Jeez. Given the number of new babies we have, we assume this uh, individual is breeding these snakes for sale to the private sector. 
upside quarantine. <laughs> People who are serious about snakes oftentimes fall into this trap where they actually become hoarders. They breed them, they sell them, and you hit this tipping point where all of a sudden you can't manage them properly. It's a huge task ahead. We've got to get them all weighed, ID'd, and then start day-to-day -day husbandry of feeding and watering and cleaning. It just takes an enormous amount of time. And so the goal, if they're donated to us by DEC, will be to disperse the main part of this collection to other zoos as soon as possible. OK, I think that's good. We've lost a total of four adults. Uh, two that were obviously sick, and then two that we didn't know anything was wrong. We've had four deaths, and we've submitted those snakes for necropsy, and hopefully that'll reveal cause of death. I need another set of these. Okay. We have to test the rest of the confiscated snakes. We don't know who's infected or who's not. And that's a problem in the exotic pet trade. There is no monitoring of these animals. We have to do diagnostics on a, a lot of snakes. We have about 180 in the room. And if they're negative and don't have the virus, we would isolate them further. Animals that are positive would remain in the existing room and possibly be euthanized. Into the hot zone. Wow. And it really, they look and act normal until right. they don't, you know? So the test results are back, and nearly three quarters of the snakes tested were positive for nidovirus. You know, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to put in all that effort and then find out that a lot of the snakes are going to be difficult to place or uh, the, the, they may even be euthanized. This issue might have started with one animal that the individual brought into his collection that was carrying the nidovirus. That could have exposed the rest of his healthy collection to this. Well, it's certainly not the ending we were hoping for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The good thing is that there's a percentage of the animals that we were able to clear, and uh, other zoos step up to take them and incorporate them into their breeding programs, and there's animals that we were interested in that we'll be able to keep. Out of all the snakes that we got in this confiscation, it looks like we're going to keep 13 here at the Bronx Zoo. So the Mang Vipers tested negative? Mangs were negative, yeah. That but, was lucky. Yeah. yeah. The Mangs, of course, were the ones we most were hoping we could add to our existing breeding group. The others that we're planning on keeping are, are a little less frequently seen in zoos. For instance, like these uh, Bothriopsis bilineata. They're a real pretty Central American species. Uh, yeah, they are really nice. And uh, Bronger's Maz Pit Viper pair up there, that's a recently described species. I think 2014 is when they were described. Wow. Um, so I don't think there's any of them in AZA collections right now. Really? Um, This is a snake box. Some of the snakes that we are sending out are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, some of them are just spectacular. That's why we get involved in situations like this. It's always about the welfare of the animal. We'll step in, we'll do the best we can, and try to guarantee that these animals have a good life from here on in.